Welcome everybody to virtual worship on this October 11th, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We are coming to you from First Evangelical Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and I am Lisa Stevens, one of the worship leaders here at First Lutheran. Today we have another special guest preacher. It is Reverend Marsh Dreggy, who is the director for Seafarers and International House in New York City. I also wanted to make sure that everybody is checking their email and getting our newsletter. We have a variety of ways to become involved in the upcoming weeks to help those in our community. So please check that out and get involved. If you are joining us for the very first time, there is information below this YouTube video about how to find out more um, about us and how to become more involved. So if you are joining us for the first time, I hope you will consider coming back and becoming more involved. So again, thank you for joining us this morning and welcome on this, the 11th of October, 2020. Let us now continue on with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson comes from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all earth. For, this, for the Lord has spoken, it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the first reading. Let us read responsively Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. It leads me beside the still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lessons come from Paul's letters to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintitia to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for this, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of our Lord. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning, even though virtually. Uh, all the good people at First Lutheran in Poughkeepsie. My name is Pastor Marsh Dragi. I'm the Executive Director of Seafarers International House, a Lutheran mission here in the Eastern Seaboard for seafarers and sojourners and immigrants. And uh, it's good to be with you today. 
you may have heard the saying, dress not for the job you have, but for the job that you want. Well, the good news for today is that God has dressed us for both, for the job that we have and the job that we want, which are made possible by God's unconditional love for us. But I get ahead of myself. These days of pandemic, most of us are dressing more casually than usual. Well, for an example, I may seem all pastoral business up here, but hmm, maybe not so much down here. But I know that you won't judge me for what I'm wearing because I do love my Birkenstocks. Especially in these very unsettling days of the coronavirus, I know you won't judge, but today's gospel would seem to do just that, judging people for what they are or are not wearing. While the A-list of banquet invitees clearly lacked social graces, I'm wondering if sending in the troops and massacring them does seem a little excessive. Nevertheless, the invitation was transformed into another offer that couldn't be refused. And immediately the banquet hall was filled with the B list guests, some worthy and some not, but at least they showed up. Inexplicably then, the king enters the hall, sees somebody in blue jeans and asks, how did he get in here looking like that? might be a little bit like somebody showing up in this day and age without a pandemic mask on their face. And it might make other people feel uncomfortable. So that guest has been called on the carpet and is now speechless. In due course, this hapless guest is hogtied and thrown from the banquet hall into the darkness where we are told people will weep and gnash their teeth, many are called, but few are chosen indeed. In this story, Jesus tells us that God's call is never a casual matter. Jesus' words underline the urgency of taking up the cross and following him. Jesus' story is radical and calls us away from those things in our lives that we fear, love, and trust more than him. Now this may be initially awkward to hear, but in reality, I think it's a gift. For there is nothing more awkward than being at the wrong party at the wrong time, without the right clothes. But there is nothing more beautiful than being at the right party, at the right time, with the right invitation, and indeed with the right apparel, clothed as we are in God's unconditional love. The urgency of intention is something that we are all about here at Seafarers International House. We show up when there is need. It's just part of our DNA and has been for the last 143 years. We are not casual about how we address the terrible plight of seafarers, especially now during this time of pandemic, where many are forced now to work on extended contracts that prevents them from getting off of their ships for 10 to 12 to 16 months at a time. And even when they do get to ports, they are not allowed shore leave because of the pandemic. And so our port chaplains, whether they be in New York here or Baltimore or Philadelphia or New Haven, Connecticut, with full PPE and practicing safe distancing, meet these seafarers on the gangway and provide ministry and mission to them, even now, especially now more than ever, where we remind them 
they, that they are not alone, that they are not invisible. We take up our cross, which is visiting them amidst the pandemic because they take up their cross each day to bring us the products that we so desperately need from around the world. We tell them on our visits, you are loved by God. You are clothed by virtue of your baptism and are an honored guest in our sometimes inhospitable worlds. By our intentional ministry, we tell them you are at the right party with the right invitation at the right time and with the right apparel clothed in God's unconditional love. Likewise, we continue to reach out to our other mission focus, which is asylum seekers, immigrants, something that we've been doing since we welcomed the first Swedish Lutheran immigrants in 1843. We have been welcoming asylum seekers now intentionally for many years, and this particular last few months have been terrible as they have been disinvited to our collective parties, you might say. Since March, our borders have been closed shut to anyone fleeing persecution in their country. Yet are we really pretending that that kind of persecution doesn't happen anymore? Of course not, especially now. We continue to welcome and to house those seafarers who have already been here for a while. Last year, we housed 35 asylum seekers with almost 200 nights of lodging at our guest house. And in each of these situations, we were able to say to these beautiful people, you are at the right party at the right time with the right invitation and with the right apparel clothed in God's unconditional love. And last year, and for several years before that, you, the good people of First Lutheran and Poughkeepsie, provided countless toiletries and supplies for our asylees, letting them know in very concrete and intentional ways, we want you at our party. You are welcomed and you are clothed in God's unconditional love. The Son of God invites you to this wedding banquet as well. And in this time of COVID, it might have to be virtual at times, but nevertheless, it's still, it's still as real as it has ever been, this invitation to the banquet, which takes place at the altar of our Lord where we can expect to receive the richest food and the choicest of wines, the very body and blood of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins and as a promise of everlasting life. Can you still picture that banquet at the altar? I know it's probably been a while since you've had the Eucharist in person, but I think you can still remember that unconditional invitation around the table reminding us that we are sisters and brothers in Christ, the ones standing next to us and the ones across space and time. And as marvelous as this meal is, what we eat at the communion table banquet is still only the appetizing course, keeping us fed until the full banquet begins in the new heaven and the new earth that are to come. So the news is that we are already clothed appropriately for this banquet. Our baptism clothes us in the garment of salvation and gives us a new identity as God's precious chosen ones. 
We are naked, both literally and metaphorically, before the living God, but yet we are also fully dressed, not with fashions of our own will, but with the grace of God. And the good news is that we are dressed both for the job that we have and for the job that we need, which is the call to go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone that we find to the wedding banquet, bringing others to the banquet of Jesus, which is a banquet of unconditional love, to which we have already been so appropriately clothed and so graciously invited. Amen. Let us confirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of Intercession With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious Host, fill your Church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, Church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially all who are suffering from any of the effects of COVID-19. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caregivers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearances, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Renata and for Judy. We pray for Kevin's sister, Mary, and we also pray for Kevin's husband, Thomas, who is having some health problems. Also, we pray for Ricky's sister, Renata. We pray for Kurt's mother, Lisa's mother, Barbara's mother, for Alice and Hans, for Carol, for Gao Jing. Be with Sherry as she recovers from surgery. Our prayers remain with all those among our immediate and extended church families who serve in medical settings. Nancy, Donna, Erica, Henry, Laura, Ryan, and Terry and Chaplain Kelly Ray at Lutheran Care. We pray for the Trevedi family in India, for Linda's friend Sally, for Anne's niece and for her brothers, for Sally's mother Brantley, for Maureen and Frank, 
Taryn and Chris, and Tom and Phil. We pray also for Ricky's other sister and for Scott's sister. We continue to pray for Eddie, Richard and David, Dale and Dave, each according to their needs. We remember in our prayers today, Erna and Michael, Tan Su, Eunice, Louise, Jean, Alice, Mary, Eleanor, Adele's friend, Anne, and Linda's cousin, Sandy. We pray for Colin as he deploys overseas and for his family as they support him long distance. For all members of our military, together with their families and loved ones, and for the chaplains who minister to them, including Lisa's husband, Anthony. We pray for comfort for the families of blanket sewers, Marilyn Hansen and Eleanor Freisitzer, who have recently died. And we pray for our Bishop Paul, assistant to the Bishop Chris, and for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, for St. John's Lutheran Church, for the Lutheran Care Center, Dutchess County Interfaith Council, our ecumenical partners, including the World Council of Churches and for the Church Universal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the ecumenical prayer cycle for today, our sisters and brothers in Christ in Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico have asked us to join them in praying for stable, democratically elected governments committed to the peace and well-being of all. Comfort and healing for the families and loved ones of those who have been killed or disappeared, and for those responsible to be brought to justice. Stopping corruption, drug traffic and violence, and those who profit from such activities. Improved economic life and trade policies so that people will not be exploited and can pursue livelihoods in these countries rather than migrating elsewhere for work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And now please share the peace with all those that you are with. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks that you illumine our way through life with your word. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the last, bring all your world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.